Greetings and welcome to Careful Conversations at the Kitchen Table. My name is Jane Bart and I serve as the Caregiving Ambassador for AARP, the sponsor of this program. And I certainly appreciate you stopping by to chat about some important topics related to caregiving. Today I want to focus on compassion fatigue, when it hurts to care. This is a kind of stress that many caregivers as well as care receivers experience and it results from having witnessed the suffering of another person. And this can occur in professional as well as personal caregivers. So compassion fatigue is actually defined as a secondary stress disorder or a vicarious trauma because it's not something that's happening to you, but you are witnessing the suffering in another person. And because you over identify with that suffering or perhaps you're overexposed to the suffering, you get to the point that you have a reduced capacity to care. So imagine this, you're caring for someone and every time you see them, you take a little bit of their pain with you. And so it starts to build up and it weighs heavy on our hearts and it weighs heavy on our minds. And we need to recognize that we are all at risk for compassion fatigue. 99% of the population has a caring and compassionate heart. And so when we see someone hurting, we can't help but be affected by that. So it behooves all of us to understand not only what is compassion fatigue, but what does it look like? What does it feel like? What are the manifestations and the symptoms of this particular kind of stress? Well, it could look a variety of different ways depending on how you typically manifest stress. Perhaps you feel as if you're barely hanging on and one more thing will push you over the edge. Maybe you get irritated, maybe anxious, very emotional, or perhaps exhausted. Some of us will tend to become depressed or isolated. And certainly our sleep habits can be disrupted by compassion fatigue. This can all lead to extraordinary medical issues, maybe even resulting in hospitalizations. It can lead to excessive behaviors, overeating, maybe self-medication with prescription drugs or illegal drugs or over drinking. But ultimately, if we fail to recognize compassion fatigue and it goes unaddressed, we will wake up one morning and we will think, I couldn't care less. And I call this emotional flatlining because it hurts too much to care. Now, before we reach that end point, I wanna offer you two very beneficial pointers on how to mitigate and manage this stress. The first being personal boundaries. You have to identify your limits, establish your boundaries, manage and maintain those. No one person can be all things, do all things all the time. It's just too much. And by establishing your personal boundaries, then you can find some time to do what I call mandatory self-care. It's not optional if you're a caregiver. You have to take care of yourself if you are to continue to care for your loved ones. Now we can't eliminate the risk of compassion fatigue, but we can recognize it and then we can do something about it. And that is a good thing indeed. So I thank you so much for stopping by. I so enjoy the continued conversation about the journey of caregiving. And until we meet again, I wish you and yours many blessings along the way.